Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's the Sketch Monkey here. I'm back here at Urban Motors to have a look at something pretty unique today. This is the Rivian R1S. So this is the SUV version of the R1T. Listen to this, quad motors, 835 horsepower, 900 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in three seconds, and it weighs 7,000 pounds. Starting price around $91,000. I'm wondering where will this craziness end? So I have a lot to talk about when it comes to this design, specifically the front end. We need to do, we need to add some more automotive styling to this product design, industrial design feel that we have here and add some emotion to this design. So we're gonna have a look at the front, side, rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this beast for a drive. Thanks to Urban Motors for providing this car for me to review for you guys today. Go and check out their full inventory down below in the description or go to urbanmotors.com. Starting with the front end design of the Rivian, this looks exactly like the R1T, the truck, but of course the changes happens behind the B pillar. But let's focus on the front end here. This to me, this is the thing with Rivian. This is not an automotive design. This is a lot more product designing. What I mean by that is, it's very static in the front end and very horizontal lines all over the place and no real emotion in the front end. When I look at this face, it doesn't really give me an expression except for maybe a super surprised one, but that's about it. So what I wanna do in the front end with this design is kind of make it a little bit more automotive in its styling. Specifically, when you have a look at these lights here, very static bar that is functional because it shows the charging rate when you're charging and it also gives it a pretty clear identity in the front end, but it doesn't have that any sort of unique expression in my opinion. So what I wanna do is remove some of this product design feel by having this, this line here. We have this round piece that doesn't seem to fit in anywhere else in the graphics. This is the only round piece that you have in the front end graphics. So what I wanna do, play around with this design right here. So cut this right here, and then maybe have some sort of line going here, connecting this bar to the headlight itself. And I think doing that will bring back some of that um, automotive feel that I'm looking for in new EVs. I think we're going too far into the product design field with a lot of new EV startups, and that goes for the Rivian as well. So doing a couple of changes in the front end, it's gonna give it a bit more of an automotive expression. One thing I do like about the front end design of the Rivian R1T and the R1S is this section here. So we have a clear separation from where the face of the car is, and down here you have all the functionality with the tow hooks, you have the integrated parking sensors right here, and the camera is mounted right in the middle, and you also have some air vents here that goes through the fenders, the side fenders, and out here in the wheel well to reduce some of that drag in the front end. So zooming in on this headlight here, I don't think this is a necessarily a, a bad looking design. It would be great if it was a consumer electronics product, but if we want to create cars, I try to separate automotive design from product design to have more of an emotion, a personality in cars and vehicles compared to consumer electronics. And looking at this headlight here is a pretty unique integration. We have four big bulbs for the headlight, for the high beams and low beams, and you also have Rivian inside of the light itself. I do like these uh, LEDs that go around it, creating some sort of uh, styling in the lighting part itself, even though it's very simplistically laid out. Jumping around to the side view of the R1S, I think this is gonna be a pretty unusual statement, but I think this side view is actually the best view for this specific truck. I like the line flow. We have a clear, clean shoulder line going across the entire car. And then you have this chrome piece up here, kind of separating the roof line from the rest of the body. And these wheels, these are not the 20 inch off-road wheels and tires that you can get with this. These are the 22 inch sportier looking tires. And I do like the design of them. I like that they don't cover up everything like we have on a lot of EVs these days just feels nice and it's all not all black it has this charcoal gray to it so you can actually see some of the spoke designs in the wheel one cool little detail on this side view is that if you look here you actually have a little camera in the plastic trim itself 
very unique integration of camera and then you have the Rivian stamped out here with the yellow outline I think it looks nice it is chrome looks like it is chrome but we do have some yellow to contrast that chrome and make it look 3d in the side of the car we also have this intake here this hole I would call it not properly an intake or outtake outlet is just a hole cut in the fender to again reduce some of that drag now this Rivian comes with 11 cameras again 835 horsepower 11 cameras where would this end I'm not sure how much uh, technology you can cram into cars these days but you have one you have two cameras in the uh, actually three so you have one camera underneath then one camera here and then a third camera right here in the front end it looks like this side mirror has some sort of disease with all these holes in it talking about the proportions of these things I think this looks very good for a big SUV it has a clear sharp proportions with the box shape you can divide this into three boxes if you're gonna sketch this up box number one being here and then box number two actually two boxes the R1T you have the bed as a separate box as well very boxy design and stately in the side view however I do want to work a little bit more on the front and the rear graphics so let's go ahead and have a look at what's going on in the rear end coming around to the rear end of the Rivian first thing I want to show you a cool light sequence when you open up this car you can see the light bar just lights up very smoothly nice integration of some light design and then it has this interesting chirp sounds like a small bird when you lock it listen to this very interesting so looking at the rear end graphics here and this is the same kind of problem I don't know if I just call it a problem but things that I want to change in the rear end the, it's very in, uh, industrial and product designy back here with this light bar going across the entire length of the car in one single thickness pretty thick going on right here but what I would like to do to add some of that uh, automotive feel to this design is to basically turn this and then have a cut in here somewhere in this section we, we, we remove some of this light bar so it becomes thinner maybe over the Rivian logo and then comes down in the same thickness as we have of course on this side I think adding some some of that styling to the LED bars in the rear that's pretty much all you need to add some of that automotive philosophy of design into the rear end and then we have the big Rivian logos or, or letters stamped up here and right underneath the V itself this is where you hit the button to open the top part which opens like that there we go and then you have the lower part here as well opening just like we have on the uh, BMW X5 the new one for example couple of things here in the rear end that I think this looks when you look at the styling of this car it looks almost exactly like a Grand Wagoneer the new Jeep specifically with this very upright end point here with this super sharp angle almost 90 degrees coming down into the body and then we have this wiper positioned right in the middle of the rear window something that I would personally want to change and maybe remove however there is no place here where you can actually hide it so I'm not sure how they would solve that problem maybe have this piece stick out a little bit and hide it behind some sort of body piece right here I'm not sure but I would like to remove this to have the same kind of clean layout that we have in the overall rear end of the Rivian on the window itself so overall guys I think Rivian is onto something here but I do think they should move into the automotive design field a little bit more take a step back from from that consumer electronics vibe that I personally get from this vehicle but with that said we talked about the, ex the exterior now let's jump in and have a look at the beautiful interior of the Rivian R1S well hello there and welcome to the interior of the Rivian R1 SUV what you have here is a small little TV on the dash you thought that the uh, Toyota Tundra's 14 inch was big it's got nothing on this 15.6 inch infotainment screen same thing here where is this going to stop I'm gonna keep coming back to that statement when it comes to the Rivian because of all the extremes that's going on in the design and the power and the and the technology in here and then you have a pretty normal size 12.3 inch uh, uh, gauge cluster which looks I don't know I wouldn't call it well integrated neither of these because you see how the rest of the dash 
has nothing to do with the shape of the of the screens here same thing for the gauge cluster it just feels like it's stuck in here with some gorilla glue and that's about it it doesn't have any housing for it no trim around it details like that matter if you're gonna have screens like this they are just basically software based make it at least make it nicely integrated with some nice framing around it but other than that we do have some vents down here that uh, uh, that th these are one of these wet vents that I can't manually adjust so I'm gonna have to go in here and kind of figure out how to do this I use the software to uh, figure out or, or to direct the air not a fan of that I just want to have a, it's not that hard to put one handle here one little thing knob to just angle the air yourself instead of having to go into the software like we do in Tesla's as well it just adds complications to the functionality of the car in my opinion but other than that if we look at the overall interior quality here what I love about the interior here is first of all this um, I don't know if this is Alcantara or what this is but it's very nice feels soft and I like the gray color with the yellow accents the seats this is vegan leather um, not sure what that means but I guess uh, I would assume that there is no animal products in here that's the only thing I can say about the seats the leather of the seats then you have the Rivian logo stamped in here with a separation for the headrest feels like it's kind of stuck on top of the rest of the seat very interesting uh, design it's getting very hot in here so let's turn down the AC and let's figure out how to have the air blow in my face I think I can feel it changing right now so that's how you change the angle of the air add some fan speed to that as well and then we have this gorgeous wood trim here this is absolutely beautiful but you do have a very rough texture on this wood with Rivian stamped in here and then you have this um, uh, aluminum trim going around it so you have both industrial and sort of uh, natural trims or textures and vibes in here with the metal combined with the trim wood trim that we have here beautifully done the steering wheel feels pretty good I mean it's pretty small you have a flat bottom steering wheel the design of it is beautiful I like this simplicity that we have here with a chamfer going around in the middle point and then you have the same wood trim on the spokes that we have on the dash it's a beautiful steering wheel doesn't need anything else than this the doors the simplicity of the design of the dash itself continues into the doors we do have a, a slice of that wood trim going in and the metal trim as well with a big compartment down below for whatever you need to store it's a big compartment for putting whatever you want down there overall you know you definitely know that you're sitting in an EV because these are the interiors of EVs these days they feel a little clinical and a little sterile but I do think that Rivian is trying to add some emotion and some uh, cool design features and styling features in here specifically with this wood trim here this is very flat and uh, pr pretty much nothing going on here however it is soft touch and in this infotainment screen you have the radio of course you have all the uh, driving modes so you have sport conserve snow off-road and towing towing I'm not sure how that's gonna how much that's gonna affect the range probably from what I've seen so far it's about like 50 percent reduction in range this has some um, about 321 miles of range also depends of course of how how much you're towing and then you have the ride height selector right here so you can select what type of ride height you want if you want it to be sporty of course you're going to go down low if you're going off-road you can raise it up which is super useful and pretty easy to do with the air suspension that this car is fitted with the gauge cluster looks pretty nice you have the map kind of fading in to the left side of the screen pretty cool integration of how that fades into the car itself in the middle and then you have the drive selector and the what gear you're in here on the side to the right one thing that I would love to have in this car is why doesn't it have a glove box it feels like this should have a lot of space here for a glove box but it doesn't have it instead you have these two right here that opens up and it's a pretty deep uh, armrest uh, storage space here with two USB-C ports and that's about it one pretty cool gimmick here is if you pull this out hold on I think you need to be in park first and then it unlocks this little speaker that we have in the interior so you can have this when you go camping feels pretty sturdy and heavy so I guess it's a good quality speaker when you're not using it you just slide it back down in the compartment down there you also have this big massive sun or glass roof in here a bigger one for the fr first and second seats 
then you have a separation and then you also have it actually for the very last three row seats back there so with that said let's check out the rear seat and let's see how much leg room and headroom you have in this Rivian R1S all right so jumping in to the back seat the second row uh, the row of the interior you do have a hanger here with a USB port USB-C port in the headrest of the front seats and a pretty sturdy flap here to put whatever you need and in the middle you have dual climate controls with a pretty large display USB-C ports and look at this we do have normal vents in the back this is what I want to see in the front end it can't be that hard to re remove the software and just have it be like we have in the rear end perfect headroom is here is pretty massive because this is a very uh, boxy shape so the same headroom you have in the front the exact same header we're gonna have in the back and then you also have this third row seat back here all the way in the back doesn't look like you have too much leg room back there but it's probably good enough for kids all right guys let's take the uh, quad motor Rivian R1S on a drive so we have 835 horsepower under this thing one motor for each wheel which is good if you're going off-road but not with these tiny not with these 22 inch wheels but if you have off-road wheels and tires on here you don't need a front rear locking diff since every uh, wheel has its separated motor it's pretty cool so i have it in brake region high i have it of course in sport and i have the ride in stiff so as sporty as it can get here so let's see what this has to offer the thing about EVs the, the big problem with EVs in my opinion all the EVs that I've driven they've all felt the exact same way <laughs> which means that they are incredibly fast but it feels like the car itself and I think the the, the personality of this car not just when it comes to the uh, to, to, to the uh, delivery of power it's very smooth delivery of power of course, you have over 800 horsepower. It's going to be a quick car. Holy moly, it's quick. But I, I enjoy driving a Mazda Miata NB more than I drive this, than I do driving this. And the reason being is I feel like the Mazda is given, as I said when, when I drove the Hellcat recently, the Mazda feels like it's putting in an effort and it's with you in this struggle to get you up to speed. You hear the noise and vibrations. Here, it's so clinical and the car just, yes, okay, let's do 0 to 60 in three seconds. I don't care, do whatever you want. I'm just gonna chill about it. And it, it kind of takes away a lot of that driving, a lot of that driving and uh, pleasure that you have driving cars. And that's the big problem I think EVs have today is that they need to figure out how to bring back that connection that you have with the car. And that connection that I'm talking about is this, that you're feeling that you're both uh, in this together when you're driving the car. Here it feels like you're separated from the car itself. But it is pretty quick. I th honestly, I thought it was gonna feel quicker. Maybe I'm just used to Model 3 performance these days. I'm not sure, but it is quick. I mean, it is a 7,000 pound SUV. So you can't really expect it to be a, a Canyon carb or anything like that. But I think Rivian is doing a great job. I think they're onto something here. If you're into EVs, if you like this type of vehicle, you're looking for a three row SUV EV. I mean, the Rivian is, is a really good deal. You have it, you, this power and this technology for $90,000 sounds also like a pretty decent deal when you compare it to the competitors just sum up the design here uh, the design doesn't help this uh, disconnect that you have with with the car because the design itself feels very bot like it feels like a consumer pro electronic product and if you're gonna have this type of driving experience uh, that is very disconnected from from internal combustion engines at least make the design feel like it has a personality huge thanks again to urban motors here in denver for letting me review this uh, beautiful uh, rivian r1s and now i'm going to jump into that bronco over there and have a look at that that is actually the seven speed manual that's pretty exciting stuff anyway if you're interested in this uh, vehicle or any other of their inventory i'm going to link that uh, down in the description so go and check them out if you want to and thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video